Now, each day coronavirus numbers tell a heartbreaking story of lives lost and the grip the disease holds on the entire world. But those figures, often seen in maps and graphs, are vital in the global fight. Yeah, the information steers our response, directing us to where help is needed the most. So we sent Sunrise reporter David Boywood along to meet the Aussie-based company responsible for crunching the all-important data. That trajectory is promising. Flatten the curve. It's like a 25% increase. If we don't do this and we don't flatten the curve... It's fallen to about 13 to 15%. The corona crisis is a numbers game. Large numbers of cases. The true number is probably five or ten times as much as that. Terms like flattening curves and exponential growth now part of the global vocabulary. Looking at this chart, which just shows you the sheer cumulative number of deaths in various different countries around the world. How steeply they could depress the curve. In fact, data is king, and it's what's fueling our response. It's definitely been, um, it's been challenged. So the data is changing on a, on a hourly basis, if not, if not less than that. Simon Jackson works with Esri, a company that crunches the numbers, creating maps and graphs like these. They then land on the desks of prime ministers and world leaders responsible for steering our pandemic response. How important is it for our decision makers and our first responders to have the data represented like this, to have it broken down in this manner? I think maps in particular make that decision making process a lot easier to, to understand. Sometimes if a, a report's just sent in a, in a kind of a static file and it's quite hard to interpret, it can be quite tricky for a decision maker to really make sense of that. These representations rely heavily on the accuracy of the data coming out of other countries. Australia's reputation for clear, transparent reporting is of a world leader. Other nations less so. But here, experts confidently use these maps to trace the virus spread, drilling down from a national to a state, local and even suburban level. Third-party data from apps and other devices is also fed into this system and that quickly gives us a snapshot as to how the community is responding. Take, for example, GPS data. Well, it can quickly show up population hotspots on a map. It also allows us to measure the effectiveness of those social isolation orders. These kinds of data, um, spatiotemporal data that we can compile and analyze in near real time procedures, do suggest that people staying home, home, in isolation, quarantine, are useful. This type of mapping was most recently used during the bushfire crisis as it allows for a tailored response. Whether it needs to be a massive quarantine of a given area or whether there need to be uh, medical people going in to deal with a particular area. It's essential work, but behind each map and every graph is the human face of this crisis, and that's not forgotten. Each of these points that are on the map, these are people's, you know, mums and dads, the, the grandparents, and wives and husbands. Wow, yeah. that's fascinating, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? And that's yeah, not to great. be forgotten. No. Everyone is a person.